Commander, what are you doing? I feel like I'm in Greece. All right, now <laughs> we're fine. <laughs> what happened to Greece? I don't know. It's like they're, they're all like up against each other, remember? Like Greece, like, look at this. I feel like I'm in a movie, bro. They don't have any we're personal space. <laughs> she does look like she was flexing. I'm trying to get Jesus. the best. Well, you know who you remind me of? The Brazilian dancer in Greece, the one Cha Cha. You know, she did. She was like the woman, and like Sandy was like, "What the hell?" It's the hair. Yeah, and you were like, oh, cha -cha. Have, "Have we welcomed our audience yet?" I don't Welcome. Know we Welcome. Hi. To Greece. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's the in, word. In typical so, DTLT yeah. fashion, we're still messing around before. All right. We get so, serious. what's our topic today? The topic for today is that I brought up the idea that it seems like more recently than not, educational technologists feel like they're on one side or the other with new technologies with Google Plus or with the iPad it's either it's going to change education it's amazing or on the other end of it they're like screw it I'm not going to touch it at all and especially with Google Plus for in my network any, anyway more people seem to be on the other side of the fence not even going to deal with it not interested in it at all I don't really care about it and I'm wondering if that's sort of an unfair pass to give people, not so much just regular educators, they can choose whatever network they want, but as educational technologists, do we have a prerogative to use these networks, figure out what's going on with them, or are we allowed to just say, you know, yeah, not interested until it's compelling, and then we have to get mm -hmm. in there? Yeah. Interesting. Well, if, if I can just jump in right here, yeah. I remember back in 2007, I don't know, I think it was, 2008, mm -hmm. when Andy and Martha were playing around with Twitter, and I remember Cole Camp Lease was, they were like the earliest people I remember, and I was like, that's ridiculous. I'm not getting on Twitter. I was all like, <laughs> the blog is the blog. the blog. Don't start with Twitter, and I got kind of like defensive, but over time, when I saw uses for it and people started doing awesome stuff with it, I jumped on. Well, mm -hmm. and, and similarly, I remember back in like spring of 2006 when Jim was trying <laughs> to get us to use Typo 3 and Slideshow Pro, and I was like, yeah. no way, no how. Those were dark That times. sucks. <laughs> and boy, did I not learn a lesson from that. <laughs> you didn't. You were actually right. Because <laughs> I was totally did? right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> that basically was the point I was trying to and make. Was, Thank God I didn't jump on that bandwagon. So, what a waste of my totally time. Totally wrong about Twitter. Yeah. So, okay. so he's two for two. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm usually wrong, but I look good. It's so a big difference. The message to our viewers should be to watch what Jim likes or dislikes and do the, and do the exact opposite. Yeah, because we right. could then start talking about the iPad. <laughs> Yeah. We should. Yeah. I um, think that's a big one to talk Jim, about. Jim, you know, has been down on the iPad, and it's probably one of the most successful uh, electronic devices. Well, I don't think he ever suggested that, it wouldn't be successful. He just no, uh, yeah, that that's, we would that's probably all be true. And, and the, the, using it. seriously, the argument is whether it, it changes education, I think, is what people said that the iPad would do. And, and it's, it's, it's an, to me, it's another computer, you know. Well, yeah. And, yeah. and at the time, it was a device that, that didn't do any of the the creation, you know, is really a consumption device. I talked about that, wrote about that. Yeah. Um, but since then, I mean, it's it's every bit as much a, a creation device. There's a lot of creative tools and playing with, um, yeah. you know, synthesizers and mixing tools and that sort of right. thing where you can create music on it and, and literally record and do all the things that, that a computer would do. So. Well, yeah. I was just going to say, and my philosophy has always been that I'm neither going to say this is going to change education. I'm not going to go on either end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to say this is the most amazing thing since sliced bread, you know, whatever. Or I'm also not going to just dismiss it outright and say probably not worth my time and effort uh, j because of the position that we're in where people are looking to us, I guess, to be able to tell them what's worth worth its salt. What should I invest my time and energy in? And I guess I feel like I don't feel like I have a responsibility to try everything because right. I'm a professional and I'm allowed to choose yeah. the things I want to invest my time in because I can't do everything. Sure. But I would never want to dismiss without knowing any tool or technology. Like I haven't really played with Google Plus. Mm -hmm. I don't really have thoughts one way or the other. Right. And if somebody came to me and said, hey, what do you think about Google Plus? That's what I tell them. Right. Yeah. And if they were interested in doing more, I would explore it with them. Mm -hmm. I mean, the same way that we tell students, you don't, we don't let them dismiss out of hand. Like, we have students in DS106 who are like, Twitter, I don't want to have anything to do with Twitter. Yeah. And what we say to them is, that's, you for this know. class, you got to have something to do with it. And if at the end you decide you never want to, like, log in again, that's fine. I don't mm -hmm. care. But engage yeah. with it before you dismiss it. Yeah. But say I don't yes think I have to no. engage with everything, but I don't think I can dismiss the things that I don't engage with. Yeah. 
And I think in some ways, one of the problems with the technologist, the way we're, you're framing the idea of the technologist, but the way the idea of the technologist is framed more generally is like you have to be in there, you have to evaluate the tool, and then like every other tool out there, you have to say like, this is why it's good or bad. Right. Yeah. And I think, that's, yeah, yeah, you know, that's not all what we have to do, but I think even more as technologists, I think we should be thinking more about the implications of the tool, the implications of Google having a social mm -hmm. network yeah. that right. is kind of building on right. an existing social network like Facebook, what it means for ideas of privacy, for ideas of identity. Like those questions around Google Plus right now and identity are interesting. Like, mm -hmm. will they let you have a fake name? Mm -hmm. um, will they have let you have a fake identity? And you know, I Which like those rather, ideas. Yeah, that's a rather huge thing. And and I think it's also our responsibility. It reminds me of a conversation I had with my mom a couple of weeks ago. My mom is a lifelong educator. She just retired as a college professor, and she got an iPad in the spring. Yeah. And she started playing around with it, and she loves it. Like, she she's never seen without it. And um. <laughs> And she was like, Martha, this is the future of education. And I was like, yeah. what? And she's like, you should see these books that people are developing. This is the future of textbooks. This is the future of education. This is what technology has been promising us. Yeah. And it's going to happen. And I was just kind of cringing as I heard this because right. I really respect my mom. And yeah. you know, she knows a lot of what we do here. But I'm thinking, you know, as a, in my position, I feel like part of my responsibility is to be like, look, this is what it is. Yeah. But let's mm -hmm. be honest about what it represents. And mm -hmm. do you really want? the future of education to be this locked down, highly, right. very Absolutely. slick, um, highly produced textbook mm -hmm. coming well, out of the same publishers who are yeah. like, you know, I mean, let's blackmailing us. That's the real <laughs> problem behind yeah. the iPad. It is extremely popular, but you know. Well, but, there, it, but, but that's just it. The reason that it's popular and, and the reason that people do see this change in education, it's because it's the way that you interact with the device that, mm -hmm. that changes things. It's not the device is, you know any any great difference between a normal computer other than you know you touch things and there's you know there's assistive technology capabilities that's built into it and that sort of thing it allows this new way to interact with things that haven't been possible before sure. and that's how it changes education for some people it's good for some people it's bad but i think in general it's a it's a new and neat way to go and i think good and bad you know that's probably where as you frame it early on tim is where we get into trouble like i don't want no part of this or i want right. part of this but more of kind of a sitting back and kind of a critical idea of, okay, this form, the iPad, the touch device, Apple, whatever, is going to be dominant. Mm -hmm. And by extension, what does that mean for ideas right. of book deals, right. of the idea of locking down this material? What does it mean for the open web and the idea we understand so many of the things that we've been pursuing as a group? I mean, we have biases. I have biases. Mm -hmm. right. But, I mean, those things are actually real, but we can't ignore the fact mm -hmm. that that choice and that direction has implications yeah. for what we thought was some of the real possibilities of the web and open education right, right. and making it more affordable yeah. and freely sharing the stuff we do. Right. Now, apps aren't freely shared nine times out of ten, and that's even becoming more the case now. We've seen it even happen with plugins and themes for WordPress. Like, more and more, there's a there's a price of on sure. everything. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I mean, there, good or bad, I don't know right. if that's good or bad. Again, I don't want to... There's two ways of looking at that, and, and one of them is, I mean, these apps... The, the good thing is that they're not expensive. You know, we're talking about 99 cents in some cases. Mm -hmm. So it makes it much more accessible. The other thing is there, the, the control is there. Essentially, I mean, Apple may want to have the control, but, the, but it's also there to keep things working properly, mm -hmm. you know, so that things don't break as often. And that's the, yeah, that's the advantage of that it. That gets really gray. It, I it, mean, it, because it, what about those apps that they politically don't like? Those yeah. apps, sure. Like, I mean, but that's it separate from the, But that's separate from the idea of, of, of stuff Working. Well, that was the whole fascist <coughs> idea of eugenics. I'm going right? to steer us back <laughs> in the direction of where we're headed because I see a, another debate with Apple, and we can do that. But the thing, do we have to? Yeah, I mean that, that's, right. that's not really coming back to the main thing. I wonder if, specifically with Google Plus, if the outlash is sort of, um, you know, with one person I read, Dean Shiresky, mm -hmm. he sort of pointed to Google Wave and said, look at everyone who got excited about Google yeah. Wave, mm -hmm. and then a year later, all that time and investment into that product was for nothing. They mm -hmm. just killed it outright and said, yeah, it's not happening anymore. Mm -hmm. And so I'm wondering if people are a little bit gun-shy to jump back especially in with, with Google. Google. And then yeah, they had Buzz. Google. I mean, in the interim, and they had Buzz, buzz which bust. had, like, which was a bust, and they had similar privacy yeah. Well, and there's other products with and, Google and that we champion. Google yeah. Docs, I mean, yeah. if someone came to me and said, mm -hmm. Microsoft Live, that's what I want to use, I'd say, eh, yeah, I yeah. really, I'm a big Google Docs fan. But it, when it comes to these social things, yeah. we have a history with Google of it sucking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so it's sort of this idea, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if you really want to spend all your time in there. And a social network, 
is a bit different than someone just saying, there's this tool online that I want to try out. I'm probably more likely yeah. to jump in there and play around with it real quick. With mm -hmm. the social network, it's like you jump in there, the first thing they want to know is all your personal yeah. information. Right. Who are your friends? Right. Can I friend you? Can I put you in a circle? And that's mm -hmm. a little bit different, even as an educational technologist, to say, I just want to figure out what this is, right. how you use it, as opposed to jumping mm -hmm. in whole hog and right. putting all my information out there. But what I, was remar what I thought was remarkable early on with Google Plus was just how quickly based on all my other social networks and emails that, you know, you had a ton of people. Yeah. As many as I spent, and many years as I spent in Facebook, though I wasn't an avid user, I had more people already in Google Plus than I did in Facebook, following mm -hmm. me or I'm following. Yeah. I was thinking to myself, like, the whole circle system, I don't think, and frankly, Google Plus does not get me excited in any real way. Yeah. But, I mean, I, the only thing I like about it is those Hangouts. Right. Are you and the using radio it? Hangouts. I am watching it. Yeah, I'm going on there and looking at you it. You do? Yeah, I do. Yeah. But it reminds me so much of Facebook, and I mean, it just seems like right. such a vapid ripoff. Yeah. And yeah. other than the hangouts, it doesn't seem to add anything else. But, you know, who knows? Like Twitter, I could be in there in two months being like, oh, my God, Google Plus right. saved my life. Well, I think, I think what's critical for any of these technologies, and Twitter's the best example, is that they kind of made it this open thing where everything all the innovation took place after it came out yeah. mm -hmm. and I, I don't know how much Google is actually doing that with Google Plus yeah. there it was seems no, like, like prescribed it's, use case exactly. it was just like this is a really cool simple tool yep. what are you going to use it for and, and then you wait and see what emerges and you build right. the yeah. business around that and mm -hmm. I don't think that's what's going to happen with Google Plus like given Google's track record I think they're, right. they tend to be much more prescriptive yeah and this is where the control yeah. is a negative yeah. Thing. yeah I mean if anything they're preventing specific uses right. brands are getting pulled right. off of there mm -hmm. Coca-Cola and others they're saying no you couldn't have have yeah. a profile and they're taking it back off There's right. with the real names yeah. policy. And so, say what you will about Facebook, they've definitely taken some missteps as well, but I think mm -hmm. they lean more towards the direction of Twitter where, like, they, it's Facebook when it first started out, it wasn't it wasn't this hugely engineered experience. I think right. it's a, it's a, it has evolved. Right. Yeah. Some may not like the ways it has an evolved, but it has evolved in reaction to users. Yeah. Yeah. The thing I like about Twitter that, that Google Plus, I don't know if it ever is going to answer this, is the, the limit of 140 characters with Twitter allows its yeah. API to be exploited in other ways. And a great example mm -hmm. of this is Flipbook on the iPad, right. Right. where Twitter goes out and, and you look at Twitter as this 140 character thing. Kudos you see for the bringing avatar. the iPad back into the conversation, well, by I, the way. I tried to, I tried to get <laughs> it back in there nice. as, as, as yeah. best Can I could. Can I talk about eugenics then again? <laughs> no, we're going we're gonna, to, that'll be the line that we don't <laughs> cross again. Okay. Um, Every day, Jim's going to see I mean, if he can get eugenics. But to get back to my point where I was, you know, had the floor. Um, <laughs> You've been doing really good today. The, the Twitter, the <laughs> Twitter with the avatar and the links or or the hashtags that are there. It, it flip Flipboard allows you to kind of look at that in a different way just by taking yeah. the API and kind of exploding it out. So when you see a Twitter post from somebody that you know, they have the link there that's that's expanded out either to a picture like from right. TwitPic yeah. or the or the link goes to a web page screenshot. For a video and. and it, yeah. It's just a new way of looking I, at it. I also think, like, just on a conceptual level, it bothers me when I hear people saying, oh, I love Google Plus because I'm not limited to 140 characters anymore. Yeah. And the yeah. idea that, like, the, the only thing we could do, it's like you did have a blog. <laughs> yeah. Like, exactly. if you Put really have more to say, and frankly, I don't want <laughs> my social network to be everybody writing. Right. But that yeah. space to be everybody writing long blog posts. And if I you will try read to, people's blogs for that. If you try to follow the stream in Google Plus, it's, it's it, much it goes more, off the yeah. page yeah. much quicker right. than Twitter does. And, and Twitter does, just and allows you yeah. this quick re review of who's yeah. talking about what. Yeah. Well, and there's services like Twit Longer that allow you to do that and extra space. Yeah, yeah, because it's yeah. like, why not get your own blog? Or get a Tumblr. Rather, yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah, exactly. They're, They're going to write 30 pages of information on twitlonger.com and put it out on Twitter as opposed to just having your own blog. Can we do another show on how I think of the ridiculousness of having a Tumblr, a posterous, and a blog. No. Like when did Thanks for asking, though. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is nice that he made it a question. Yeah, that was... That was yeah. You know, my and rather out of character. If I cut my sideburns off you know, right this, now, they would kick your sideburns as ass. This yeah. device is available at any time, so if right. you want to come here So it'll just be night, Jim today. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah Jim at night. <laughs> Jim at night. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> It'll have the explicit tag probably too. No, yeah. so. I mean, but back to the point when before you guys got off track. The the bigger <laughs> point is, you know, I, I'd rather see people writing on their own blogs and doing their own thing. When they're doing that Google kind of stuff. Plus. Yeah. 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 Right. And when they decide to blog again. Yeah, right. I, who's when posted, you guys who's, post, who's posted again. on Google Plus? I mean, who's... 
I mean, I, other than commenting on other stuff. I have, I have. but it's all okay. it's all about Google Plus stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. What do you that, think of that's, Google Plus? That's the rule of Google <laughs> Plus. Is you I'm only Google talk Plus. about yeah. Google Plus. Yeah. yeah, it's like Fight Club. Well, so. and, the, and the circles thing is an issue too with me. Yeah. It's kind of like it, somebody brought up the the argument that you know Twitter you have followers and it would be just it would be nice just to have followers, but then you have to on Google Plus you have to figure out are they a friend are they acquaintance? Yeah, do you need to right. create a new group? How do you create a new and group? And I don't really like thinking about people that way. No, yeah. I don't like thinking. I just put people into friends or. Or just followers. Friends I just cut them in half. But in half. Frankly, you cut people in half. I did. I frankly, I don't think I'll be on Google Plus. I don't think we'll be talking about it. Well, there's got to be some. Yeah. There's got to be some hook that gets developed. Yeah. We're and, out of time. Uh, we're almost done. Yeah. yeah. So. So that's it for now. We'll talk more about Google Plus, Tumblr, iPads, and a lot more Bye -bye. at some other point. See you. Bye, folks. Bye.